Before we begin, we're gonna cover off on a couple of things you need to keep in mind when progressing through this masterclass. If you have any previous injuries or conditions that are gonna limit your range of motion, you need to make sure you go and get those sorted or you go back to the Unlocking Your Movement masterclasses we've provided in order to make sure you tick all the boxes before we head into the more advanced versions. A lot of these masterclasses are gonna take extra wrist, shoulder, thoracic, hip mobility, and also shoulder stability. So be sure you tick the boxes and drop back if you've had any injuries or you feel like you're not quite at the level. I'll provide a few extra tips and tricks as we progress through the masterclass, but at any stage, if you feel like you're not quite there, drop back because we wanna avoid in injury. The next element, it's practice. When we're looking at these advanced body weight moves, we wanna be making sure we only hit the required sets and the required reps, which have been provided or will be provided before you progress to the next stage. And I want you to use a term or practice called greasing the groove. When you're practicing these movements, don't do them in excess. The idea is to do them when you're feeling rested and you're feeling like you can tackle a small amount bit by bit and progress over the long term. Adding excessive load or volume into your training with these advanced moves too early could result in injury. So pick two levels, stick with those for a day. If you hit the required level on the sets and reps, progress the next day. Don't advance any more than two levels at any one training session. So steady as she goes, Take time to progress through the movements. Make sure you hit the sets and reps before you advance any further. Welcome to the Hanging Leg Raise Masterclass. Now, the Hanging Leg Raise, it's all about compression and being able to get that range of motion. So we're gonna go from a floor to standing approach, but the things you need to work on if we haven't addressed any trunk stability issues that we may have present. So if we can't maintain a two minute push up plank, and we can't move through some of these floor-based movements easily before we progress to on the bar or rings for our more advanced version, make sure you pay the time to do what you need to do to get into a condition to be able to advance to the more difficult hanging leg raise versions. Now, step one, the leg lower, and seated leg raise combo, which will be about two sets of 15 reps a piece. Now we're gonna start with the leg lower or the leg raise, whichever we wanna call it. We're gonna start on the floor. So trick here is keeping our lower back forced into the floor, palms up, palms down, doesn't really matter. We can even have hands under our glutes, but we wanna keep them free ideally so we can't brace through the arms. We wanna have our legs Nice and tall, full extension. So we're gonna lower down under control where that lower back doesn't peel off the floor. Coming back to the start position, lower back's forced into the floor. And coming back up to the position there. So the drill I want you to think about, which you can do with a partner, is if you had a towel under your back and someone was trying to pull that towel out, that lower back should be forced so hard into the floor that people can't pull that out. So that's a lower back, towel underneath, you can get a partner to try and pull that towel out while you're conducting your leg lowers. It's all about that eccentric phase lower, control, and then back up to the top, lower back forced in the ground, compression on the front or the anterior. Okay, the next part is our seated leg raise. Now, we don't have things to hang from, this might be a great little drill for you to go to because we can do it in a single leg or a double leg version. Now this is simply holding onto the floor like so and we're raising up as high as we can and compressing that anterior to try and get those legs as high as we can. Now if we've got work to do on our hip flexors and things like that, we can go to a single leg version where you'll be able to test if there's any stoppages or issues on our single side. Once we're comfortable, two sets of 15 reps, compressing into that position there. You'll feel that in your hip flexors. So if we do, we can simply slow it down, go to a single leg, two sets of 15 reps, 
bring in the double leg once we get those hip flexors conditioned and we've got that compression on. Step two, hanging leg raise is our back body line drill and we're gonna partner that with some hanging drills to help get you used to hanging from the bar for an extended period of time. Now the back body line drill is super useful because it times the lower and upper body in that open close motion that you're gonna need for your hanging leg raise, but then also still focuses on that compression and lower back being forced into the, into the ground, which gives you that feedback you need to learn the position. So starting position here is down with that little bit of weight, hands trying to snap that down vertically above our chest. Now, chin should be tucked a little bit and our head will be off the ground. Our lower back is forced into the ground, making sure our lower back doesn't come off the ground at any stage. From here, we're opening up. And there you have it guys, it's that simple. So as we're working on it, we wanna bring those legs up a little bit higher as you would have seen in those last two reps I did to bring it closer to our bar that we have our hands on. And that'll become evident as to why when we start to get into the full hanging leg raise from the bar. But when we're doing this, we've got three sets of 10. And then I want you to partner it with just some static hangs. Because if we don't know how to hang from the bar confidently, we're gonna have a lot of issues because this is where we're gonna be performing the movement. So on a bar you can reach, you can use gym rings as well, either or, doesn't matter. We're gonna simply jump up and go to a flexed hang and a dead hang. So we're just going as deep as we can and we're gonna hang from that bar. Grabbing nice strong grip and we're hanging, you'll see those shoulders next to my ears. We should be pretty comfortable hanging from here and this is our start position for a hanging leg raise. So we shouldn't be in an active position where we're maintaining a lot of tension through our scap and our shoulders. We should be in that dead hang position here. And once we feel a little bit more confident, we can even go to single arm hangs, switching, and we can practice those transitions and build up, we're aiming for 30 seconds a piece, but we wanna build up to about two minutes a pop, once we get nice and comfortable, and then we come out. So that's three sets of 10 on the back body line drill, partner with a 30 second to two minute hang, depending on your level. Try and increase the time at which you wanna hang, cause it's just great for shoulder mobility anyway. And then we can bump to step three. Step three, hanging leg raise which is our bent knee raise. We're taking it up onto the bar now or gym rings, whichever you've got, doesn't matter. And it's all about that compression we've worked on the floor. So the cues I want you to think of here is knees to chest, and then that nice little pause at the top of the movement to make sure we've got that compression sorted before we go to that extended leg version, okay? So jumping up onto the bar in that relaxed hang position, not active, where you're winding on too much tension and we're simply knees to chest, lowering down under control. Working that compression. Three sets of 10. If we can't get knees to chest, we just keep working that movement until we get knees to chest, three sets of 10. Remember, it's all about that abdominal contraction and compression, so we can progress to extending those legs in step four. Step four, hanging leg raise. Now it's time to bring the legs into the equation. So, like our seated leg raise, we can involve double leg or single leg, and we're gonna start with a bent leg, and then also work some eccentric movements which will help us get into the right position. So before we get to straight, complete straight leg on our level five, which will be our finishing move, we wanna test where our weaknesses are for a couple of reasons. A, to 
to make sure we can get to full leg extension. So we might need some posterior chain mobility to help get us into that position. We not, might need more work on our compression element to make sure we can get high, those legs high enough, but we're gonna break it all down. So from the bar again, we're gonna go for some bent leg versions. Now this is bending your knee enough, but having the feet extended for you to raise above hip height, okay? Hanging from the bar, relaxed hang position, and we're simply going to keep our legs together and we're going to raise with those bent legs. So we should be getting that feet up to head height, ideally. And that's our bent leg version. Now we're aiming for two sets of five on those and then we're gonna ramp it up a notch by straightening our legs, but in an eccentric version. So check this out. We're gonna go for our bent knee first, extend the leg, lower down. Raise the knee, leg, lower down. Knees, leg, lower down. So by that stage, we're breaking down each individual side. You'll see what you're gonna have trouble with. But there are bent leg and our single bent leg variants we can try before we go to the full straight leg where knees are locked, posterior chain mobility is sorted, and we can focus on that compression. Step five, hanging leg raise. It's time to put it all together and achieve our full hanging leg raise, knees locked, arms extended on the bar. Now, you could probably gather you need a fair amount of hip flexor strength, compression ability on your anterior chain. You also will need some good posterior chain mobility, which we've alluded to. Now, a quick test before you jump up and you try this because you're gonna to need to try and hit this position standing before we can add it to a bar. And that's a simple loaded toe touch. Now, fists are closed like we're hanging onto a bar. We're lowering down and we should at least be able to get fist to floor. Our weight shifted nice and comfortably. If you invert this, this is me hanging from a bar doing our hanging leg raise. So if we need a drill to warm up, we should be to our posterior chain. We should be going to that toe touch, fist to floor, as many reps as we need to. And if we have any blockages there or mobility issues, we should be using our trigger point gear and stuff to rectify it before we try and get into that position on the bar. Otherwise, we're simply going to have restricted range of motion. Now, hanging leg raise from the bar. Your first goal is to get those feet eye height. Then we can go to feet to bar. Now remember, there's no swinging in our strict version. We want to avoid swinging into the rep because we want to earn it by using contraction or compression and good posterior chain mo mobility and shoulder stability. So let's take a look at eye height and then we'll break down the toes to bar version. So compression, straight leg, uh, extending through the heel, so pulling those toes back. And there's our eye height version. You would have known, or noticed maybe, that I'm pulling that bar towards my feet as well. Quite often, we're not gonna have all that mobility and strength to be able to just do legs alone. So when we're going for the toes to bar version, I want you to focus on pulling that bar down towards your feet at the same time. So we're meeting together as opposed to trying to make our legs do all the work. Let's take a look. And there you have it guys, full hanging leg raise, under control, no swinging. Make sure you nail that posterior chain mobility to make sure you can actually get your toes up there. But remember step one, eye height. Step two, full toes to bar.